When I was a boy and winter came, I would peek in the morning from the window of my room at the two green trees outside and hope to see them white. I longed so much for snow that I wanted to be a metro meteorologist. A meteorologist, I thought, is the first to know when it is going to snow. But several nights that started with a forecast of snow, tonight snow will fall in the hilly areas, left me bitterly disappointed in the morning. Then, several mornings that dawned with unheralded white uh, vista led me to the conclusion that the meteorologist was not the first to know when it would snow. Instead, it was Arie Mansdorf, the neighborhood grocer. He was the first to wake up and say uh, his morning prayers before setting out to arrange the bottles of milk in his grocery shop. Later, I wanted to be a lawyer who would defeat his adversaries in battles of intellect and rather sharp logic. In order to prepare myself for this heroic task, I borrowed uh, Samuel Hugo Bellman's book, Introduction to Logic, from the Labor Union Library. This book did not make me a master of debate and did not equip me with a wealth of rhetorical tricks. The only thing I remember from it is the description of teen soldiers lining up in the courtyard. A resounding defeat in a classroom debate on youth movements for and against, I was against, made it clear to me that personal charm is more helpful in winning an argument than understanding the law of a syllogism. I had a good fortune to go up in one of the most wonderful areas of Jerusalem. Rabbi Meisel from the synagogue my father attended on holidays, the communist Salah Mersel, who made the point of eating pork just to annoy everyone. Aunt Hannah, who left her husband in Siberia and immigrated to Israel with her two children. The virtual uh, slaughterer from the Yemenite courtyard. The widow whose son got caught up in crime. And the intellectual Jacobson, who wrote a book explaining the rationale of the Jewish commandments. All these characters instilled in me a sense of great awe for those people who understood the complexities of human interaction so well. As far as I am concerned, the opinion of such people is just as authoritative for making social and economic decisions as the opinion of an expert using a model. So I don't know when it will snow and when prices will change. I am not an advocate of justice and have done nothing to change the social order. I don't feel entitled to advise anyone on the basis of my professional knowledge. I find myself denying that the models I work on can serve as a basis for predictions and in general I don't think that the appropriate test of economic models is whether they are useful. If the models we develop in yellow uh, notepads or on blackboards constitute a basis for predicting human behavior, it would be miraculous in my eyes. There are no miracles in economics. But there are, one, are wonders. In my studies in the Department of Mathematics in Jerusalem, I learned to see wonders in the world of formalities. I sometimes also see them in economic theory. I approach economics as someone with a sense of curiosity, who is trying to understand the logic of human interaction a bit better. This may not be much, but perhaps it's not so little either.